In this video, we're going to talk about velocity as vectors. Suppose a plane is heading due north with an airspeed of 400 kilometers an hour when it's blown off course by a wind of 100 kilometers an hour from the northeast. We want to determine the resultant uh, vo ground velocity of the airplane. Well, like it says here, a wind from the northeast means that the wind is heading to the southwest. We're more concerned about where it's heading to. So we can draw our diagram as such. 400 kilometers an hour straight north, and then uh, 100 kilometers an hour to the southwest. Um, with no nothing more specific uh, telling us the degrees, uh, we can assume when it says just southwest uh, that it's a 45 degree angle. So we'd like to know what the resultant vector is, and we'll begin by determining its magnitude. It's a pretty straightforward case of side angle side. We know one of the sides of a triangle and another side as well as the angle uh, in between them. So we are just going to use the cosine law. And when we do that, we get um, a magnitude of uh, roughly 336.8. All right, so that's good to know. Now we can also use the sine law to determine the magnitude of the angle down there. We're going to look at the uh, the vector that we're looking for and trying to determine is the resultant. So we're going to form an angle at that resultant's tail. And uh, when we do that, we use the sine law and determine that alpha is roughly 12.1 degrees. We can use the sine law here without uh, fear of the ambiguous case of the sine law or without fear of uh, getting an acute angle when it should be obtuse. Uh, the reason is we know the angle must be acute because we know that the angle here, because this side is not the longest side, the angle across it cannot be the biggest angle. And as a result, we know it must be an acute angle. So there's no harm in using the sine law. We see that alpha is roughly 12.1 degrees. And so as a result, we can state the velocity of the airplane is approximately 336.8 kilometers per hour north, 12.1 degrees west. Now, this next question is, uh, you know, perhaps a little tougher because we're asking you for the uh, component uh, velocity of the wind. In other words, what's happening here, we're telling you uh, one of the components uh, looks like this vector and another component looks like this vector and we're asking you what is uh, the direction and magnitude of uh, the other component. So again, one component looks like this vector, the resultant looks like this bottom vector and we're asking you to determine the magnitude and direction of the component. It's a little bit of a different question and a lot of times students find it a little bit more difficult. So, um, like it says here, question is different from the last one because in the last one we were looking for the resultant, but in this one we're looking for one of the components. We draw our diagram and uh, we see that um, it's good oftentimes to draw a north, south, east, west uh, grid at the tail of each vector. Well, if you look on the graph here, um, Two of the vectors are tail to tail, so drawing a north, south, east, west uh, grid at the tail of each of those uh, means just drawing one such grid. Um, we see that the resultant vector, which is the one that's a little lower, uh, makes a 10 degree angle with the horizontal line because it's 10 degrees uh, to the north of west. And um, the uh, upper one uh, makes a 25 degree angle with a horizontal line which means it makes a 15 degree angle with the other vector because uh, the 15 and the 10 uh, will equal the 25. So uh, our diagram looks good as written. Now we need to determine the magnitude and direction of that third vector just drawn in. So it's good to put a north, south, east, west um, grid marker at the tail of that vector, the one we're looking for. Uh, at the tail of it, we're going to put the north, south, east, west, the way is drawn on that diagram. And the first thing we're going to do is to determine the magnitude of that vector. 
Well, that's not too tough. We're just going to use the cosine law because we have uh, side angle side uh, within that triangle of vectors. And using the cosine law, we get that the uh, magnitude of that uh, component wind vector is roughly 106.2. Now, we'd like to know what is the angle formed in that triangle? Uh, what is the angle uh, indicated by theta right there? So um, we could use the sine law here. Uh, someone might be tempted to do that. We can simply say sine theta over 410 will be sine 15 degrees over 106.2. Just keep in mind, though, that there's a danger to that because the answer to theta for all we know might be an obtuse angle and the reason it might be obtuse is because the theta that we're looking for is across from a side length that is the longest side so um, rather than do that and you know not be sure if we should be using an acute angle or an obtuse angle in our answer why don't we just use the cosine law since we know all three side lengths anyway so it's a little bit safer to do that Using the cosine law, we get that theta is equal to approximately 87.9 degrees. Okay, so we see what the answer is within that triangle, but we need to be able to state that in terms of north, south, east, and west. So one thing we're going to do, we're going to say, okay, this horizontal line is parallel to that horizontal line. And this diagonal line here is forming a Z pattern. It's a backward Z. And we see that this little angle in here is 25 degrees, which means this angle up here will be 25 degrees, which means this angle from the vertical to that vector will be 65 degrees. And so I just need to know how big this little sliver is out here. Well, if I know this to be 25, meaning this must be 65, and I know the whole thing to be uh, 87.9, then that little sliver will have to be 22.9. To show you a little bit more neatly, here it is. Same, uh, same explanation. Uh, I see that the magnitude of that little green angle is 25 degrees since the uh, uh, component vector is 400 degrees west, 25 degrees north. So that 25 degrees is indicated by that green uh, angle. So using the Z pattern, I see that there's another green angle right there because these two uh, horizontal lines are parallel to each other. And again, there's that diagonal right there. So, um, what we can then do is say uh, that inside uh, that uh, we've got 65 degrees indicated by this orange piece right here, because the green piece is 25. So, there's 65 degrees in there meaning that the little piece to the left of that vertical line that I'm now indicating in yellow must be roughly 22.9, okay? And so that this yellow piece right here at 22.9 and this orange piece at 65 will uh, add to give us the theta of 87.9. So if we zoom in right at that part right there, we will see there's a 22.9 degree angle, and the direction is roughly south 22.9 degrees west, meaning the velocity of the wind is approximately 106.2 kilometers per hour uh, in a direction south 22.9 degrees west. Now, we're going to do an example here where we talk a lot about vertical and horizontal components of velocity. Suppose Anna is trying to cross a river, okay? and um, the current of the river flows uh, six kilometers per hour. She has a motorboat which can travel at a speed of 20 kilometers an hour in still water. Uh, she wants to go directly across and she heads out directly across. Well, she's a little mistaken because she's not taking the current into account. We want to know, first of all, how long it'll take for the boat to cross the river, then how far downstream the marina will push 
the, the current will push the boat from the marina. And then finally, we're going to help her in part C uh, decide what direction she should uh, head out in so that she actually does get directly across uh, from her uh, desired destination. So we draw our velocity vectors as you see there in the uh, bottom left. We have a 20 kilometer per hour um, purely vertical uh, velocity. Uh, when I'm doing this question, I'm thinking of the river as flowing horizontally. Her boat heading out, I think of that as vertical. The current, I think of that as horizontal. Okay, so uh, her vertical velocity is 20 kilometers per hour. Her horizontal velocity is 6 kilometers per hour. Now, we know that speed is equal to distance over time. But very conveniently for us, it holds true for components also. The speed in the horizontal dimension will equal the distance in the horizontal dimension uh, divided by time. Similarly, the speed in the vertical dimension will equal the distance in the vertical dimension divided by time. So if we're looking to know what the uh, time is, all we have to do is um, divide uh, the uh, vertical distance of two kilometers by the vertical component of the speed, which is 20 kilometers per hour. And in doing so, it takes to get across the river. See, when we're trying to find out what the time is, we want to know if we know uh, one of the distances, either um, vertical, horizontal, or resultant, and the corresponding speed, whether that be uh, vertical speed, horizontal speed, or resultant speed. Well, in this case, we actually knew both the vertical distance, which was two kilometers, as indicated in the question, and we wanted to know the vertical speed, which was given... Uh, by her boat, which was heading out 20 kilometers per hour. So 2 kilometers divided by 20 kilometers per hour is one-tenth of an hour. Now that we know that, one it'll take her one-tenth of an hour to cross the river, we now know the time that we can then apply to the horizontal component uh, because we want to know what the horizontal distance is. Well, since we know the time of 0 0.1 hours, and we know the horizontal speed of 6 kilometers per hour, we're going to be able to figure out that horizontal distance. So interestingly enough, what we did to determine the time was uh, use the vertical distance and the vertical speed. Once we figured out that time, we applied that to the horizontal component to help us figure out the horizontal distance. And horizontal distance is another way of saying distance downstream. So we see horizontal distance will equal the horizontal speed times the time. The horizontal speed is six kilometers per hour. That's what the current is. The um, time altogether is one tenth of an hour. We learn that by using our vertical components. And six kilometers per hour times one tenth of an hour is 0 0.6 kilometers. So we can say that the boat will end up 0 0.6 kilometers per hour downstream because distance downstream is horizontal distance. Now, finally, um, after one time across, perhaps Anna realizes, you know what? Uh, let's see if we can head out uh, in, in a manner that'll get her destination to be straight across. So we want to figure out what direction the boat should point. See, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make the resultant vector be straight across. Well, since there is a horizontal component, as indicated by this arrow up at the top, we're going to have to take our other component and push it out, in this case, towards the right so that it will offset any, uh, horizontal, um, uh, any horizontal velocity uh, caused by the current. So what we're actually trying to do, believe it or not, is figure out what is that angle right there, knowing that this component vector up to the right is equal to 20 kilometers an hour magnitude-wise, and this uh, component vector, purely horizontal, 
that the magnitude of that is uh, six kilometers per hour. So we want to figure out the value of theta. Well, conveniently, we're going to be able to use uh, Sakatoa. Uh, sine theta is just opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta is just six over 20. Theta is roughly 17.5. So we're going to be able to say that if she makes her uh, component vector be 17.5 degrees uh, against the current, into the current at that little bit, then this uh, component here uh, will be perfectly offset. Okay, so uh, the boat should head out approximately 17.5 degrees upstream. And from there, um, if we wanted to find out what is the resultant velocity of the boat, uh, we would just have to do a uh, pretty straightforward Pythagorean theorem here. Uh, 20 squared plus 6 squared, uh, sorry, 20 squared uh, would equal 6 squared plus uh, this unknown um, uh, side length squared. When we do that, we would see that that unknown side length is roughly 19.1. So if we were asked what is that uh, resultant velocity across, it would be approximately 19.1 um, kilometers per hour straight across the river. Mm -hmm.